Hey everyone, April Dunham here. Hopefully you all had a chance to watch Microsoft Ignite 2020 last week and caught the announcement that Project Oakdale is finally in public preview. I'm pretty excited about this because this is going to really allow us to create rich Teams-based applications with Power Apps and the power of the Common Data Service. So with that news, I thought I would do a Template Tuesday video and walk through the inspection template that is available to you within Project Oakdale. So of course, I'm going to show how you can install and get started working with Project Oakdale in general. Then I'll go through how you can install this inspection template. All that and more coming up, but first, here's the intro. So first, let's talk about how to get Project Oakdale started in your environment. To utilize Project Oakdale, you're going to need to open Microsoft Teams because every app that you build will be built inside of the Power Apps app for Microsoft Teams. So first step is to go into your left rail once you're in Teams and click the three dots to add more apps. And do a search for Power Apps and you'll see Power Apps show up right here in the recent in my case. So you'll just select that. And if you haven't installed it before, you'll see a dialog box pop up to add. And then that will add the Power Apps application into your Teams tenant so you can start building Project Oakdale apps. I've already did that, obviously, but once you do have that in here, then you'll see the Power Apps application within Teams. And you'll see this landing screen where you can see the recent Project Oakdale-based Teams applications that you've built. And if you scroll down, you'll see three built-in templates provided to you within Project Oakdale. You have employee ideas, inspection, and issue reporting. I can dive into each one of these templates in later videos if you all are interested in that. But for this one, let's focus on the inspection template. So if you want to use one of these templates in your Teams environment, you'll come here and you'll select the template you want to use. And then all we have to do is click the Add to a Team button. And then you can use your search and find a team that you want to use the inspection template in. So for example, I'll choose this general IT site and then select set up a tab. So this is going to add in this inspection template as a tab in the Teams channel that you just chose. It's just going to have you confirm. And then you have the option here to choose if you want to post to the channel about this tab being added, which is kind of just a built in Microsoft Teams feature when you add any new tab. So if you don't want to post to the channel about this, just uncheck that checkbox and then click Save. And so we'll go through a setup process and add in that inspection application into this team. This process can take a few minutes to get this installed. So just sit back, relax, have a cup of coffee, whatever you need, and let this run. And in just a few minutes, we'll have a ready to use inspection application. Once it's finished installing, you'll be prompted to authenticate into the connectors that the app uses. So we'll notice that this template is using the Teams Planner in Office 365 users connectors. So we need to click the allow button and then we can start using the app. This particular template does use Planner. So you'll get this message when you first initialize this, letting you know that you need to create a Planner tab in Teams to get started. So you'll want to go ahead of time and add in a Planner tab into the channel that you're creating this app in. So I've already did that. I have one called IT Inspections. And then you can select, I have a Planner tab, and that will take you to this configuration screen where you point it to the channel. And then it will list all the different Planner tabs that you have in that channel. So you can select the one that you want to use. And this is just an initial setup when you first load the app. You don't have to do this every time. So we'll click Continue here. And then just select Let's Go, and you can get started using the app. When you install this Inspections template, you're actually getting two different apps. The first app that you'll see by default after you install it is the Manage Inspections application. The audience for this would be users who would configure the app, who would see and approve inspections and need to edit them after the fact. So more of your administrators. The other app is the Inspections app, and that is your end user frontline workers who would actually be going through and performing the inspections. So this particular template can be adapted to almost any inspection scenario. This example is kind of using a retail approach. It's populating some data in here to start with so you can see how the template works. So the idea would be you would select an area of the store, so maybe the frozen food section. You can see the information about that area and any inspections related. So you see here on the left, we have the different 
areas and we have numbers by them so we know how many inspections are there for that area. So if I go into the ambient food section, I can see there were two inspections done and I can dive into that by selecting the inspection. I can see who submitted it, the status, if there were any issues reported, and any notes. So I can see that there were no issues with this particular inspection and it was clean and hygienic. So you could have a review process and you can come in and change this inspection status to closed and then go back. And that status is updated below in the table. You see we're able to add a new location by selecting the add location button. We can give it a name, a type, and if we go to manage location types, that will take us to a new screen where we can add in different location types by clicking add location type. And that's adding a item below in this gallery so that we can add a new type of location. So you'll see there's some built-in configuration that you can apply out of the box without having to change the app itself and open it up in edit mode. So if you click this settings button, you see at any time we can change that association for the planner where it puts these tasks out in, in this section here. Location type is where we went in to add in the different types of locations that we just looked at. Then the grouped locations where we can have different groups of locations here and associate them to the areas. We have even more options to configure. So you can kind of customize how this app works and the verbiage that it uses. So you could use this for an inspection, but maybe you don't use the term inspection. You use the term audit instead or walk. So you can select the option here and it's going to update the verbiage used throughout the application, which is pretty cool. So for example, if you're using this, I have this in my IT channel. So if we're using this for a security audit, we could change the items being inspected to computers instead of locations and the category to computer type. So once you click save on the different settings, it's going to update the application. And you see now that our add button says add computers instead. And this verbiage up here changed from inspection to audit. If we go to the audit insights tab, this is going to give you a summary of the different audits or inspections, whatever you chose to call it here, and the statuses that they're in. It's also going to calculate the average audit time in minutes and surface that up, surface up any open audits in the top audit report contributors, all in this dashboard type screen. Then if you go to audit forms, this is where you can build out the different types of inspections or audits that you might be needing to do and fill out a checklist of audit steps. You see we have two here for the retail store scenario. We have detailed walk and morning walk, and each one has a different set of questions or steps that you need to go through. So if I'm wanting to use this for a computer audit scenario, I can do new audit form. I can give my form a name, associate it with the type, and then we can add steps, which are going to add those checklist steps or questions. So I can give it a name. Then we have these action buttons, which allow us to give this particular step a pass fail action. We're limited to three options here, but we can customize what the different options are. So instead of saying, okay, we could change that to pass and we can change issue to fail, depending on what your requirements are. And then in a, we can change to maybe not enough info. You also have the ability to add instructions. So for the person performing this audit or inspection, you can give them for this sign-in security section, what exactly should they be looking for? What are the metrics or requirements for this? And you can just keep building this out by adding another step. And the actions can be custom for each checklist step. So for this question, I might just have a yes, and that's a green check, and then no could be the warning. Once you're done, you can click save, and that's going to take us back to the home screen, and that audit form now is going to be available for our end users to use in the actual inspection application itself. We just did a summary of the administrator manage inspections application and how you can use that to customize the inspection app, add in your own categories, see insights, approve the inspections and all of that. Now let's switch over to the end user side of this and how you can actually use that to submit an inspection. So this inspection application is added at the same time when you select the inspection template. So to use that, just click the inspection tab that's added when you add the inspection template. And that will open up the end user side of this app. And you'll see we have a landing screen where it shows a welcome message, your pending audit task, 
and a week at a glance summary with some metrics about issues reported, average audit time, and all of that. And from here, the main use of this application would be to perform an audit. So we can select the perform an audit button. Here we'll see the different categories for which we can do an audit for. And to start this audit, we can select an individual computer in this case. And then here's that audit form that we just created in the previous step. So we see the two checklist items. So we can select the begin audit button. And this will take us through our audit list. So that's the description that we filled out. So make sure that they have a strong password and MFA. So we can select the option here for sign in security, whether they passed or failed. So if I say fail, for example, you'll see that I have the ability under add details to upload photos, notes, and task. So if I need to have any additional information for this audit, I can select the photo button, add in a screenshot or a picture of what exactly is wrong. I can go to the notes tab, give some more details along with this. And if I need some kind of task for this, for example, like if this user doesn't have MFA enabled and I need someone on my team to do that so that they can pass this audit, I can select task and that'll take me to this form, which will use the planner integration. So if I can click assign, search for a colleague, put in a description, add task, and that's going to assign David a task to enable MFA. I have my note here. You have to make sure you click save note for that to be applied. And then here's the other piece of the checklist, which was antivirus. So I can do my yes, no option here. Again, add any additional details. And when I'm done, I select review. This will take me to a summary of the checklist items. So I can see that for the sign in security section that there was an issue noted, but for antivirus, they passed. And it's even going to let me know that I have one attachment there. So I can just do this quick review, making sure that I submitted and completed the checklist correctly and then click submit. Now this is going to give me a nice loading message letting me know that my inspection is being submitted and a success message once it is done. If I have more items in the database, I could also easily from the screen, just select another one to perform an additional audit. Then I can click return home and this will go into update my summary screen to show the active audits that I have. And I can click open task and this is going to take me directly out to planner so that I can see any tasks that were assigned to me related to this. And this all ties together. So if I go back to our manage inspections administration app, now I'll see for the Surface Pro, there were two audits done. So I can see this one just minutes ago that there's one issue. I can select it, see the details. There's the attachment that I uploaded. I can see a task was created and I can update the status once it's reviewed to say pending action because David needs to perform that request. And then my audit insights should be updated. So I can see that there's one in review, one pending action and see a breakdown of how many open audits there are by device type. So pretty cool application, really configurable with this administration manage inspections app and the end user application. Now these applications are really cool, but I want to give you some heads up and some warning. There are some known issues and limitations that you need to be aware of before you start using these templates. So the first one is if you are in the government community cloud, you won't have access to Project Oakdale yet. So sorry for those people in GCC, not exactly sure of the timing of when that will be available in GCC, but you're not able to take advantage of this quite yet. The second one to look out for, especially when you're utilizing these sample apps is Project Oakdale doesn't currently support hidden membership groups. So if you have that, you'll most likely receive an error that something went wrong. Please try again later. We couldn't save your tab settings when you're trying to install one of these sample apps. So if you do get that warning, it's most likely because you have the hidden membership feature enabled by your administrator. So either contact your administrator and see if that could potentially be turned off or try a different team that that feature is not enabled in, and then it should work. Now, another big one, you can't share apps or data outside of a team currently. So when you are building these applications or utilizing these templates, you have to associate it with a given team. And there's no way right now to share that data or the app outside of the team that you put it in. Now, Project Hotel is still very new. So at the time of this video, September 29th, 2020, these are the current limitations and I'll reference this blog article that shows all the different known issues and limitations of Project Oakdale. But of course, you're going to be constantly updating that and fixing some of this stuff and adding to it. So it's just going to get better as time goes on. So another thing I'll point out as far as customizing this a bit further, when the apps are added in as tabs in your Teams channel, you do have the ability to change the headers for this. 
And this is for any Teams tab for that matter. So you can click the drop down. So if we wanted this instead to be called Audit because we did rename that in our app, if we remember, we can select the rename button and just type in Computer Audit and Save. And that's going to update the tab name. And I could do the same for the Manage. Click Save on that as well. And that will update the tab name for the Manage Audits application. I think I've covered everything I'd like to cover in this video. I just wanted to give you a high-level overview of this new inspection application that's available to us in Project Oakdale. So I've shown you how to enable Project Oakdale and how to set up and configure this inspections application. If you are interested in learning about any of the other two templates that were offered with Project Oakdale, drop it on the comments, let me know, and I can definitely include that in future Template Tuesday videos. And of course, I'm sure I will be doing videos on how to create a Project Oakdale application from scratch. So be on the lookout for that. That will come eventually. And if you have any ideas of other applications that you think would make cool templates in Project Oakdale, let me know and I can see about working on that and getting that included in a future Template Tuesday video also. Hope you found this helpful. Please like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.